So you might have heard of the kind of joke that software engineering is an awesome job because you get to earn six figures a year while only working one hour a day. And it turns out that there is a study that shows that this is kind of actually true. According to a Stanford researcher on software engineering productivity, where they collected data from the performance of 50,000 plus engineers from hundreds of companies, they found that on average 9.5% of all software engineers do virtually nothing. So around 10% of engineers engineers or are what they call ghost engineers where they get paid while basically doing absolutely no work and if 10% do basically nothing you could easily see how perhaps 20 30 40% would be doing something but basically very little work during the day so today I wanted to dive deeper into this story and look at exactly how they studied this to determine whether it is actually true that 9.5% of programmers actually do nothing and I then want to also add my own experience from working as a professional software engineer myself and also how you could potentially become one of these ghost engineers if that is your goal and you want to get paid for doing nothing which sounds pretty awesome doesn't it so do 10% of engineers really do nothing well let's just look at this study first of all it's by this account called Yegor Denisov Blanche so all credit goes to him what they found to recap is that 9.5% of software engineers are a ghosts with a performance of less than 10% of the median engineer. They do virtually no work and they might even work multiple jobs. And this is something that we have actually seen. If you search on YouTube online, you'll find people who are literally saying that they work multiple full-time jobs because of how little work they actually have in their software engineering job. So how do they know this? So he says here that our model quantifies productivity by analyzing source code from private Git repos, simulating a panel of 10 experts evaluating each commit across multiple dimensions. So it looks like they're basically using Git commits as the way to, to evaluate productivity. All right. So then they say that they found that 14% of software engineers working remotely do almost no work aka that these ghost engineers compared to 9% in hybrid roles and 6% in office work. Now, this seems to make sense from my own experience when I was working as a software engineer first in the office and then remotely, it was certainly much easier to basically do a lot less work. I'll talk more about this in a second when you are working remotely because basically you don't have anyone looking at you and software engineering is the kind of job where it's quite difficult to estimate exactly how much some piece of work is gonna do. So you'll commonly have these like tickets or bugs that you have to fix and doing one ticket could literally be fixing one line or fixing a couple of lines of code. But the issue is that you don't know how long it's gonna take you to find those lines of code to change. So if you're really good, at software engineering, if you're really good at doing your work quickly, you could very easily claim like, okay, it took me five hours to fix this bug. There was all these issues that came about when really it didn't take you that long. And especially when you're remote, it could be very difficult for them to find that out, which makes sense. And it also makes sense that, for example, companies like Amazon are now moving out of remote work entirely because they have found that it affects productivity. I made a more detailed video on this, which I will show you on the screen, which you can check out on the channel on the future of remote work in pro programming. Then they continue to say, on average, engineers working from the office perform better, but 5x engineers are actually most more common remotely. So this is interesting. So on average, office engineers work better, but the variation in remote engineers is much bigger. So they actually find that there's very, very productive engineers from engineers who work from home. And I believe this could probably be because the best engineers out there probably have more leverage in their company. They have more trust from their managers that, yeah, we can do our job even if we work remotely so i think this could explain why the best of the best engineers actually will end up working from home because their company trusts them and they will just do their work no matter what and they will do it really really well but this is pretty interesting so they say they say another way to look at this is counting code commits and they admit that this is a flawed way to measure productivity but reveals inactivity 58 percent make less than three commits per month which aligns with their metric and the other 42 percent make trivial changes like editing one line or character pretending to work. And there's a graph showing the distribution of commits per month among these ghost engineers. And then they go on to like quantify the impact from this for the company's perspective and things like this. And here we have this guy, Didi, who's a pretty popular person in the tech space on Twitter, basically giving this anecdotal experience that everyone thinks this is an exaggeration, but there are so many software engineers, not just that Fang, who I personally know literally make 
like two code changes a month. Not many emails, not many meetings, remote work, less than five hours a week for 200-300k. And then they go and list some of these companies where people do that. So this is definitely not complete nonsense. I think anyone who has been in the industry will know that coding, while it can be a difficult job, like intellectually, like writing code is not easy, but it can be quite easy if you compare to any of the other high paying industries out there, like banking, consulting. I used to be a banker. I used to be a consultant. There's no way you could do this in those industries because the volume of work is simply so much bigger than in software engineering. So you have literally situations where people can work multiple jobs because of how little work there is. And this study is sort of just quantifying that. But now I want to look at how people people are actually reacting to this. So people are giving their anecdotal experiences. There was a lady at my last job that took a few months to push out a PR with just a config change. No, she didn't just do any other tasks in the meantime. Yep, that probably happens. And there's quite a few comments of what I also thought about when I was reading this is that just counting like code commits and git commits and things like this may not be a good measure of productivity for all engineers. Coded, as this guy said, is stupidly easy. Most of the work as a senior engineer is getting alignment, writing documentation, analyzing experiments. And even as a junior engineer myself, like a lot of the work was not necessarily committing code, like writing code. It was figuring out what code to write. And then it might actually sometimes take me hours to figure out what to do. When I finally figure out how to do it, it only manifests itself as like one commit. It might make it look like, oh, I didn't do much, but really, figuring out the one line change can actually take a long time. So it is also possible that a lot of these 9.5% of ghost engineers, they do actually do work, but they're just the kinds of engineers that work on these kinds of problem where it might take them a long time to do one small thing, but that doesn't mean that it's not valuable. So just to give you my anecdotal experience in this, anecdotally, I do actually believe that this is true, whether it's 9%, 10%, 20%, or even 5%, I don't really know. But I certainly believe that, especially for engineers working remotely, it is quite easy to do this. How do I know this? Because I did it myself. Now that I no longer have my job, I can say this, I was certainly a lot of the time sort of exaggerating how long my work was taking, etc. Which, by the way, I don't recommend you do this. It's because for me, I knew that I was going to be leaving my job very soon anyway, because I had my business that was succeeding and everything. So I wasn't really taking it super seriously. And when I was on a fixed salary with no portion of my compensation tied to the performance or anything like that, I really had no incentive to not do this. Basically, there were literally days when I would just be filming YouTube videos in the middle of my workday while working remotely, and they obviously had no idea. So now to end off the video, I'm gonna give you my full guide on how to become a ghost engineer as an ex-ghost engineer. But before we do that, like I mentioned, in order to be a ghost engineer, you actually have to be good at coding, which means that you need to build good practical software engineering skills. And obviously all of this is gonna be useless unless you actually break into the industry. Sadly, these days, breaking in is much, much more difficult. And even more sadly, most programs out there that you could be using to learn to code, first of all, don't teach you to code properly, and they don't actually give you the skills to use the coding skills to get hired. For me, I learned to code in four months. I got a job as a software engineer in just four months as well. And when I was learning to code, I actually used actual learning science to make myself a plan to actually master programming in a way that almost no program out there was actually doing. And using this, I crafted myself a framework on how to master any programming skills extremely, extremely quickly. And I teach this framework to you in my paid program, Python Developer Bootcamp, where I teach you how to apply the actual science of learning to fundamentally master Python programming extremely, extremely quickly. And on top of that, I also use my experience from working a ton of big companies in the world and being on the other side and seeing exactly what companies actually look for to teach you exactly how to craft yourself into the type of person that these companies actually want to hire. So if you check that program in the first link down below in the description, and you can use the code Python for a special discount in the program. So check that course down below in the description. And now let's move on. Step number one probably don't do it. So I was slacking off specifically because I knew that my long-term goal was not to stay at this job or to work a job long-term. I was just using this job as a stepping stone to give me some financial security while I was building my businesses on the side. And eventually as they succeeded and as they were already succeeding at the time when I had my job, I knew that I was going to be leaving this job very soon. Even in the worst case that I got fired, it would not really have been a big deal for me. So for me, I didn't really worry about it. But if 
you want to build a long career in engineering if you're a junior especially you should absolutely not do this like i absolutely don't recommend you should absolutely do the exact opposite even if your compensation in the short term isn't impacted by this reputation that you will build and the skills that you will build by actually working as hard as you possibly can will pay great dividends in the long run so step number two is work remotely if you can. We already discussed this. When you work in the office, it's much more difficult to do this. When you work remotely, it is much easier. And this is the most important step in our ghost engineer master plan. Step number three, actually do everything that you're asked. If you start skimping out, if you start not completing your task or taking an more enormous amount of time to do them, they, your managers, your peers will start to see you as not a very good engineer. They will stop trusting you and they will start to demand more updates from you, things like this. So it's not going to work long term. So really, in order to do this successfully in the long run, in my opinion, you actually have to be good you build that trust and then you can take a bit longer to do your tasks if you want to do that. But again, I don't really recommend this. But if you want to do this, be very, very careful. But it is undeniable that one of the big perks of being a software engineer is that compared to, again, the other jobs out there that pay at a similar level, the job is not particularly difficult. But like I mentioned, the big part here is that in order to take advantage of this, you have to be able to work remotely. But unfortunately, these days, remote work is kind of going away in the tech industry. However, working remotely is still possible if you do certain things right, but it's just not as easy as it once was. If you want to find out exactly how to do that and whether remote work is actually fully going away in the tech industry, I highly recommend you watch this video right here where I deep dive into this particular topic. So watch that video next and I will see you in the next one.